we live in an old 1930s property like most people we've added a lot of insulation to try and keep the warmth in this winter we have had horrendous problems with condensation and mold all because we've had to turn the heating down because of horrendous gas bills when we used to keep the house at a constant 20 to 21 degrees it's fine didn't get a condensation didn't get mold since we've started turning the heat off and on again it creates cold spots so every morning we've got a lot of condensation on the windows and therefore black mold so we've tried all different things. I've done a few different videos on different things from mold sprays to insulation on the walls, even dehumidifying units. We've tried these. Now these are great to take moisture out the air, but it's just recirculating the air that's in the house. It's not helping with ventilation. So when you're putting extra insulation in your house, they don't tell you about the extra ventilation that you need because it's counterproductive because the insulation keeps you warm but the ventilation makes it cold. A few of the comments in the other videos was to get a PIV unit, a positive input ventilation unit. So I've done a bit of research into them and I even contacted a company called Ventaxia because they manufacture them. I asked them for their advice and they said that a PIV unit is probably the best solution for condensation and mould in a house like ours. It's a big unit, goes up in your loft and it'll draw the fresh air from the loft out the vents and it'll pump the fresh air into your house and circulate it round. Now they even do a unit where it heats the air up as it's coming in so you're not getting cold draft coming in, it'll actually heat the air. But from my research, you only need it on a very slow speed and that doesn't create much of a draft anyway. So they very kindly gifted one to the channel for me to install and give my opinion about. Now I'm under no obligation to say good things or bad things. I'm hoping this works because if this doesn't, I'm out of ideas and I'm fed up of all the condensation every single morning. We have even had to buy a window vac just to get rid of it. So with the research I've done, it doesn't cost a lot to run one of these units. Now you can keep it running all the time and apparently only cost a couple of pence a day, two, three, four pence a day at the most, which is next to nothing. They are available from Amazon, and I will leave an affiliate link in the description box below. And if you do purchase through my links, then the channel does make a small amount of commission. Installation, they say the best place to install it is on your landing, because obviously all the other rooms come off your landing and it's the best area to circulate the air. I'm gonna put ours up there somewhere and it's right above the staircase. It should push air around the, the landing, the bedrooms, and then push it downstairs as well. So be nice fresh air everywhere. The other thing to bear in mind is your loft hatch. Now you want a good airtight seal around that because what you don't want to happen is for the unit to draw the air through the loft hatch and recirculate the air that's already there. You want to draw in the fresh air from in the loft into the house. Because it's awkward up there in the loft and it'd be hard to film and whatever, I'm gonna do a demonstration in my workshop and set it up and show you how it goes together and how it works. So we're out here in my workshop and I've just mocked up a ceiling. So I've got two 3B2s, a ceiling joists and a bit of plasterboard. It's a lot easier to see it and film it out here than in the loft, but this is basically what I've got up in the loft. First thing to do is read the manual, read the instructions, make sure you know what you're doing before you start. The unit requires a few spare to be fitted it needs to be wired into this few spare now if you're not competent with electrics then get a qualified electrician to fit one of these for you the first job i'm going to do is to install the diffuser now it needs a round hole cutting between 240 millimeters and 260 millimeters and the best tool for that job i find is just a simple plasterboard saw when you're fitting the diffuser it's best to have open space around it but if you do have to put it close to a wall, then it's supplied with these little pieces that fit in there. So I think that's just to stop any flow of air against the wall. So I've just turned my ceiling upside down to make it easier for filming. So this is the underside of my ceiling and I'm just gonna mark a hole. So it's set between 240 millimeters to 260, so I've gone in the middle, 250. 
and just mark it out where I want it. Then with a simple plasterboard saw, I can cut the circle out. Obviously, when I'm doing this for real, it's going to be up in the ceiling. I'm going to have dust and debris falling on me. So make sure to wear a mask and eye protection as well. Right, I'm back up in the loft with the ceiling the right way up now. And in the diffuser, this bit pops out and it reveals some screws. So that will fit into the ceiling and then as you tighten the screws, them little flappy things, technical term flappy things, they come out and trap the ceiling. So I need to undo these a little bit because that's a bit smaller than the plasterboard. So them little flappy things hold it into the ceiling. So I'll just go back downstairs and tighten up the screws. That was very simple to do. Simple to cut a hole, simple to fit the unit. Onto the diffuser goes this flexible ducting. Now it's recommended that you have at least one meter length of this from the diffuser to the actual unit. Should slip over there. And then the Jubilee clip goes around that to hold that on. Right, so the unit comes with these adjustable feet. So I've put them two on already. Put these ones on. Basically just push on. And then they're adjustable for your joists. So it's a little bit awkward to do, but they are very adjustable. In the box you've got some pan head screws. So simply just screw them through the slot in the foot into the ceiling joist. And with them screwed down, I can adjust the unit. So obviously if I wasn't doing this on a rig, I'd probably have the ducting coming down there but as I've just mocked it up it's gonna go there to there and then the other Jubilee clip goes around there this cover goes back into there lines up with the screw holes and then just clips in like so. Nice neat job on the ceiling. Next job to do is the foam seals for the filter. They peel and stick. But when you've got no nails it's never that simple. Right, there we go. And then there you go onto there. These will create a seal between the, the filter and the unit. And I'll do the same to the other side. 
now that the seals are on, I've got to put these filters on. So they slip onto there. So in the box you get some string and you get a hook and that is so you can actually suspend the unit from the rafters instead of using these feet. So you'd screw that into your rafters and then tie the string so it is suspended. I've got the unit running now and you can barely even hear it. I don't know whether you can pick that up on my microphone, but it is really, really quiet. I can feel the airflow coming from the diffuser. So when that's up in the loft with the hatch closed, I don't think we'll even notice it running. And they do say it's one of them, you have it installed and then you just basically forget about it until the filters need cleaning. Apart from the little bit of electrics that you've got to do, this is a really, really simple install. Basic tools required. You know, all I used was a drill driver, a screwdriver, and plasterboard saw, a compass, and a tape measure. Really basic tools. So any novice DIYer could easily fit one of these, apart from the electrics, which you'd have to get a qualified electrician to do. It's been about two months now since I fitted the PIV unit and to be honest it it was easy to fit it up in the loft just a little bit more awkward because of the confined space and whatever but it was doable and because of them legs I could put the insulation back down so that raises it enough off the joist to put the extra insulation underneath it. You don't lose any of the insulation value. So since we've installed it, it took a little while for all the condensation to disappear but of a morning now where these windows used to be completely filled with water, it was like you'd had a shower, it's gone now and it hasn't come back. But I didn't know whether that was just because the weather was warming up a little bit. So what I did, I turned the unit off for a week and guess what? The condensation came back. I turned the unit back on and it disappeared again. So I'm pretty sure it's working fantastically well. As for the noise, once we fitted it and we closed the hatch up. We haven't even noticed that any noise coming from it. After fitting the unit, I've spoke to a couple of people who are now and they've also had them fitted in the past. And they said, since they've had them fitted, the condensation has disappeared. So I think it's safe to say it is the solution to condensation and mold. Now I was fortunate enough to have it gifted to me, um, but for the sake of three, 400 quid, to get rid of your condensation, your mould issues and for your health issues, I think it, it's worth the money. So great product. Thank you to Ventaxia for supplying it. I'll leave a link in the description below to the unit and also the tools I've used. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.